Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Um, so, as I, I mean, uh, some of the things I would say, sorry, in my set, but I'm so I will mean, uh, just comment more on the end of the um, So, the main reason we expect physics beyond the standard model is that we had a problem, which is basically the, the fact of the observation that uh, we could leave uh, here and here, and we have to leave uh, really close to this critical point where the Higgs mass is at um, So one, and this is unnatural, you know, we think about theory as a standard model with a dimension properties. Uh, one very, if you want, an imaginative idea to solve this issue uh, is uh, this composite test. I say an imaginative because we have uh, differently uh, supersymmetry. We have uh, an, an explicit realization of, of, uh, of these uh, just to draw energy to CD. Okay? There, the hierarchy uh, is the hierarchy between either of sum in the scale and lambda QCD. This hierarchy is generated by the slow running of a, of a, of a dimension almost <laughs> work, a slightly uh, relevant operator, which is the, uh, the gauge uh, the decimal term. Uh, so I can, I can try to mimic the same thing for the, for the electronic scale, assuming that there is some, uh, some strong interacting sector that develops a mass gap close to the weak scale. Okay. And so the, the, the big hierarchy is uh, stabilized, generated by dimensional transmutation. Now, the fact that we observe uh, a light Higgs <coughs> means that there must be another small hierarchy, uh, and this is for phenomenological reason, uh, and I will explain that later, between this uh, uh, lambda IR scale and the Higgs mass. So in order to have a light Higgs in the spectrum, uh, you can uh, you can either by accident, and in this sense, I would say that technicolor is, is not dead, because uh, if you happen to, to have uh, a light uh, dilaton by accident, I would call it uh, technicolor. Uh, in QCD, you know it's, the dilaton is not light, but uh, it may be. Uh, but the, the, the most natural way to realize this is by symmetry, so saying that the Higgs as the pion in QCD is, a, is, a, is the most composed of some uh, global symmetry of the strong sector which gets spontaneously broken by the strong dynamics. So the, the, the two objections, the two main objections that one can do to composite, compositeness uh, are the following. The first, there are no signs of compositeness. Uh, and this is uh, more tricky than saying that there are no signs of uh, supersymmetry because in a weekly couple theory you really uh, think that the first thing you should observe are new particles, okay? But in a strongly coupled theory, you, you, you really expect uh, the effect of any physics to decouple sl slowly, no? Because the couplings are big. So the fact that we haven't observed, uh, we haven't observed any signs of uh, new physics at the low energy experiment, uh, like left, uh, is is bad for compositeness. A cure to this is uh, both model building and fine tuning. The other thing is that there is no MSSM for, uh, for composite X, um, mostly because one is dealing with strong couple theory. But this is good in a sense because you, uh, you can make it the fact of not having a specific model a way not to be biased by a specific uh, set of assumptions. And so you are forced to uh, try to understand genetic features first. Uh, so okay, uh, how, how to deal with the first issue? You said that the Higgs comes out of a strong interacting sector, but you know that uh, uh, light fermions and transverse gauge bosons are element, are almost elemental. You know this from, uh, from that. Uh, for instance, you know also from LMC, from test of uh, like post compositeness. So you, you want these uh, degrees of freedom to be, to be external to the Higgs sector. Uh, this is good also for, the, for another reason, the reason that the, these couplings, 
the gauge couplings, for instance, and more generic, the Yukawa couplings, will break the global symmetry of the stock sector and will be a, a, a minimal source of, uh, uh, of this breaking, and so the minimal source out of which generate the exponential. Um, so a little bit of jargon that I will use throughout. So when I will refer to this composite sector behind the Higgs, I, <coughs> I will call F the sigma model scale, like a spy in QCD. So I will, uh, I will assume that uh, there is a single scale, F, uh, which is truly a coupling because it's what uh, suppresses all Higgs self-interaction. And, uh, and uh, I will assume that uh, there are two kinds of couplings, one between like vector resonances and uh, of this kind, like gauge couplings, which I call Giro, and one uh, which looks like a composite Yukawa coupling. Now, uh, you may ask how generic is to distinguish these two. Um, in explicit models, like in next dimension, uh, basically these two couplings are the same. But you may think that this coupling here breaks some chiral symmetry, so it can be naturally smaller than this. The masses of the state of the strong interacting sector, I will call, uh, I will, uh, will be linked to these couplings and the sigma model scale by this relation. That is, if G psi is smaller than G rho, then we have uh, resonances, fermionic, which are lighter than the one. So here is to say that the assumption of uh, the assumption of having the Higgs as a boson boson uh, gives you a great amount of information. So <coughs> just defining the symmetry structure of the strong sector. Uh, the, the, the usual assumptions are two, unitarity. You want to restrict yourself to causes which are compact, not to have ghost and boson with negative kinetic terms. And you want to study a symmetry because you, you, you know that uh, the Higgs uh, in the standard model, you, you know from left that to study a symmetry is almost is, is a good symmetry. And so you, you can list the possibilities. Uh, the minimal one uh, has as global group G, SO5, which is broken down H, which is SO4, and which gives just the minimal amount of Fields, which is a B-doublet of, uh, of, uh, of the solid group, which is the mix. This is, uh, this is the minimal model. If you want the minimal model which has some sort of uh, uh, no UV completion, you have to go to this no minimal one, which is the one of conformative uh, minimal minimal, which has an extra SU2 single. So as I was saying, fixing the in terms of very sentences. So uh, fixing the symmetry structure fixes the leading order intera uh, the, uh, the leading interaction of the Higgs uh, with uh, um, with uh, among itself uh, and with uh, the gauge uh, with the gauge vectors. In particular, you see that uh, in general. You expect the, the single uh, x coupling to vectors and double x coupling to vectors to be modified in a model independent way uh, to be reduced, okay, um, <coughs> with respect to the standard model. Um, another observation, what I was saying before, that uh, the, the transverse gauge bosons are external to the composite sector. You see that uh, these. The gauge interactions arise from covariant derivatives in this sense. So like the photons, the photon gauges some global symmetry of uh, the QCD sector. Here, uh, the W and the Z is the same for some global symmetry of the strong interactions. Uh, okay. Electroweak symmetry breaking uh, happens through this mechanism, uh, which was introduced by George Ryan Kaplan. Of vacuum is alignment. You can picture the, the coset in this way, like a sphere. It is for SO5 or SO4 a sphere is in four dimensions. And you have a direction uh, where the electronic symmetry is unbroken. Okay? And then the, the Higgs uh, vacuum expectation value defines an angle over this, uh, this manifold. 
uh, if if this angle uh, is zero, then you have unbroken electric symmetry. If this angle points on the equator of the sphere, then you have the technical limit where the scale of f and v coincides. Now, what what we, we've been discussing before is that having an intermediate value, a small value, for instance. Does it constitute a tuning? Yes, it constitutes a tuning because you expect the potential that you will generate dynamically in these models to be a function of HUF. Like, like, like you have a magnet in a magnetic field, uh, you will generate dynamically the direction of this, uh, well, the field H points in this, in this external field of uh, symmetry breaking catalyst. And from a function of this kind, if it is featureless, you expect either to have V over F equal to zero, which is not okay, or V over F equal to one. So any suppression of V squared over F squared with respect to one has to be understood as tuning. The crucial point with respect to technicolor is that in the limit in which F goes to infinity, that, the, that is, theta <coughs> goes to zero, I get out of the strong dynamics. And so in principle, I can live with all possible experimental uh, constraints, of course, tuning. So uh, the first one are the electro-reflexion test. There are two contributions. The most important one is the following. It's due to UV physics. I expect to have uh, uh, resonances with uh, SU, SU2 quantum numbers, which um, couples, um, which affect the vacuum polarization of uh, the W the hypercharge boson and gives and gives contribution to S. Now the sign here I mean, can be plus or minus, it depends if this resonance is axial or vector resonance. For a vector resonance the contribution is positive. And uh, you see that this puts a bound on M rho, on the and here and rho square. On M rho square, on M rho. Uh, in a in a in a different way you may say that if I fix V over F the theory prefers a strong coupling among the vector responses. Just to keep in mind that <coughs> for issues related to the mixed class. Another contribution is this one. Since I'm modifying the single risk coupling to vectors, I'm also uh, no longer cancelling uh, the, the logarithmic divergences of these uh, two diagrams, which then uh, additively renormalize S and T. So putting all together, uh, what, what do you have? So if you include the measurement, the good measurement of the W mass from the Teladron, and you do the electroweak fit, you see that without <coughs> any extra contribution to electroweak fusion test, it's very hard to go above uh, V squared or F squared of order 10 to the minus 5. Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> 5 and 10 to the minus 2. Yeah, uh, 5 percent, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, no. Of course, this is a very pessimistic point of view. You may say that uh, having uh, a, a contribution to T, which is 10% uh, of the top contribution, may come from a uh, uh, heavier state, like Victoria states. If you allow this, then you, you see that you can push the limit up to 20% uh, in square root of square. You can also say, OK, let's, these are somewhat indirect tests. Let's just uh, focus on X cutting determination from LHC data, we will get to that later. And there's no space in that case. Another, another important thing to notice is that the scale of the, of the resonances is always above uh, 2 3 TV, the vector resonances. An observation you want to make is that can we, uh, so suppose we have new physics which solve the tension which is known at lab uh, with these uh, observables, AFB and uh, RB. Can you then uh, make these bounds on the OLF uh, less tight? No, because A, the single X coupling, is a modification of two all observables. And so, and also, A, F, B already prefers V uh, squared over F squared uh, to positive V squared over F squared. So, <coughs> this will remain even if you have models which solve this, uh, this problem. Um, so, what about the fermions? Jackson talked about the possibilities you have. You can either do ala technicolor, 
the problem here is that uh, since you have Higgs compositeness, uh, the Higgs, the, the Yukawa couplings are no longer dimension four operators, which means that uh, if I want to generate a large enough top couplings, I will have uh, a flavor scale, a, a, a low flavor scale, which, give, which will give problems to flavor observables like uh, epsilon k. Uh, so the, 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 the one of the way which one, pos one possibility to solve this technical framework problem is to assume that there is a linear coupling. So there are fermionic operators from the strong sector uh, which, has, which have dimension close to 5 over 2. In this way, these operators, this mixing, have dimensions, if they have exact dimensions, <coughs> are, are exactly marginal operators. And, and so I, I can generate a large top Yukawa coupling when I integrate out uh, the states which this field interpolate um, without uh, and decoupling the flavor problem, the UV flavor problem. Also, this is nice because if I have a long grinding between the UV and the infrared scale, I can also explain the flavor hierarchies. Okay? If, uh, if I take the dimension of, uh, of the fields which means with the light fermions to be bigger than 5 over 2, I can generate large flavor hierarchies. Uh, so it's worth it. And, 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 and the structure of the Yukawas you get from, uh, from this from this is the following. So you have a sort of CISO mechanism where, where the jeep size is completely Yukawa. You can write it this way so that uh, heavy, heavy fermions okay, will be strongly mixed uh, with, the, with the composite sector. In the limit in which epsilon is, is equal to 1, you, you are actually saying that, uh, for instance, if epsilon q is equal to 1, but saying that the q left is a state in the composite. So, what are the bounds from framework in this picture? You don't have any referable problem, but in the IR you have resonances which couple uh, an anarchically to with respect to flavor. The only protection you have is exactly this fact that light fermions are weakly coupled to the strong center. The bounds taken at phase value are, uh, are strong. You see, for instance, delta S equal to transition requires the mass of the fermions to be larger than 10 TV, which means if there are order one uncertainties, but if this is true, uh, you won't be able to observe anything and uh, there will be fine tuning problems. So, but still, I mean, it could fail much harder than this because uh, here one is being very, very, uh, one is trying to explain the flavor structure of the standard model at the weak scale. Okay. So this is CP conserving or CP violating? This is uh, CP violating. Okay. Um, in the lepton sector, it's even worse, of course. Like, new to gamma puts around in order 100 TV. So you want to assume flavor symmetries. I let me not go through these. Uh, you, you can put flavor symmetries, which can actually reduce the bound on the on the heavy fermions of this model below the TV, which is important for phenomenology. So you can do this. Of course, you are giving up a partial explanation of the flavor structure of the of the of the, the groups. So what about uh, the X potential? Uh, how is the X potential generated in, in these models? As I said, uh, the minimal amount of, of interaction which breaks the, the global symmetry of the strong sector are the gauge interactions and the Yukawa couplings. The, the most important Yukawa coupling is, is the top Yukawa coupling. So you expect that the biggest contribution to uh, the X potential will come from the top Yukawa coupling. It turns out that uh, the structure, so Partial compositeness fixes the structure of the interaction between the top left and the top right to the strong sector to be this. So there are these lambdas. Okay. And uh, when you integrate, when you, when you calculate loops of these elementary fermions, of the standard model fermions, you are generating a set of terms of this kind. Okay. One the limit one is proportional just to lambda squared. Okay. So I do a loop of the two left and I get this contribution. This just follows from uh, NDA. Okay? These heavy fermions will cut off the divergence of the potential. 
this is the structure again. It's, these are functions of h over f. Actually, the, the form of this function is fixed completely by symmetry after I pick the, the SO5 representation of this operator. The coefficient isn't, and you need uh, an explicit model to calculate it explicitly, but you expect this coefficient, the one and two, to be of order one. Okay, so from this formula, you can estimate the fine tuning uh, and see what you, what you would naively expect for the x mass. Assume the top right is a singlet, then it won't enter the potential. So the analysis simplifies, and the top you cannot copy is given by this. That is relation. Then, let's also expand this function. If f is big enough, I can do it uh, in power series of h. Okay? So from this, now you, you can uh, determine the vacuum and the x mass. So, Suppose you, you, you want, and so estimated you. So suppose you want to live uh, uh, with the electronic precision test, you know that d squared over f squared has to be smaller than epsilon. Then in this plane, dA, where here you have one, and here you have one, you are actually selecting these, uh, these lines. Okay. Now, uh, and this was known before uh, LHC, you have to stay here. In this sense, the tuning is v squared over s squared, because this is an angle which is given by v squared over s squared of the whole thing. Now, you want to measure, you, you want to have an x mass which is, uh, which is not too large, and so you want to select b, you know, if you calculate the x mass from this formula, you will select this region here. The, the region in <coughs> h smaller than uh, an h experimental if it's uh, to measure one is bit so at the end of the day, the, 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 the region where you, where you can live, uh, now you can say that the x mass is not zero. But this is truly the region where uh, you don't have to cancel something. Okay? So you end up living in this region. And you can express the fine tuning in the following way. You can express, so using the fact that uh, m psi is equal to g psi times f, you end up with this expression, which is, uh, so, which is what we knew also before. So we knew that uh, if in the standard model uh, something has to cure the, uh, the divergence, the divergent contribution to the mixed mass. These are the top partners, which cannot be too heavy. Okay? Now, the statement that the Higgs is light is actually adding an extra piece of information that, that is, they cannot be too strongly coupled. Okay? So this is the, I mean, again, I'm doing this assumption. If I assume that the top right is not uh, a singlet, uh, there will be ex extra contribution to the Higgs potential. So bigger fine tuning, because I will have a bigger quality coupling. So you see, the observation is the following. Um, natural light mixing and breaking requires light of partners, and light X requires them to be not too strongly coupled. Um, so the generic situation we have is from electroweak precision test, the electroweak resonance is, has to be 2 3 dB. Uh, from flame of physics, uh, uh, from fine tuning, they have to be light as light as possible. From, uh, let's say, flame of physics, they cannot be too light. So we need to up here. And so there has to be this relation between the couplings in the strong cycle, uh, which is non-generic, because in, a, in these kind of holographic uh, models uh, in five dimensions, the situation is typically this. Uh, there is only, there is a single mass scale, which is the AK mass scale. Okay? So, in general, you expect these models to find the, be uh, much more tuned. Okay. How can you uh, then discuss the phenomenology of these models, of these resonances? Uh, in a, since we don't have a model uh, which we truly believe. Uh, so if you have, if you have these, you expect to have the resonances all equally spaced, then 
you understand that um, I cannot just keep these vessels and study these because if this mass splitting is uh, smaller than the mass of these, uh, I cannot write down an effective field. So I have somewhat to assume that some, the lowest line resonance is somewhat lighter than, than the other one. Okay? And this allows me to write an effective field theory. And I can do this both for fermionic resonances and also for uh, vector resonances. Why should it be like this, uh, that one is lighter? Because, for instance, it can be that one of them is more weakly coupled than the other. So this can be realized in the course of five minutes. Okay, so what about then top partners? Uh, how, can you how can you study them in model, the model independent way? Uh, so in this paper, this was done for the minimal complex model, assuming a completely composite top right, which is the case which we remind the continuity of simple form. What you have to here you can see it. What you have to input is the SO5 representation that mixes with the top left. And the SO4 quantum numbers of the lightest three. Then you write down uh, an effective field theory, just to write down all the possible operators. Uh, you have the <coughs> order in uh, derivative expansion, and you have your effective theory. And this uh, allows to study the phenomenology of these of, of, of these states. In particular, the, the strong interaction in the Higgs sector uh, leave their trace in particular operators. You can write, for instance, this one. Uh, the top right is composite, then it talks directly to the goldstone with no suppression, no like you cover up in suppression. Okay. And this and this is very important in phenomenology because it allows to singly produce the top partner, okay? So uh, like uh, from electron weeks in work production, let's say. And uh, so really here to write this effective theory you should not, you don't have to commit to any model. You just have to assume that. The Higgs is a Boston boson, give the representation of the fermions, write down the effective field. And what, and what, and the result you obtain will also be valid, at least qualitatively, when uh, the splitting between the various states gets smaller. Okay. Another possibility, another thing. Uh, but see, in a previous yeah, this is you can high as the pseudo is the Higgs, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another possibility instead of okay. Uh, so how did you eliminate C1 again? Because in this case, uh, so here I was assuming that uh, they were assuming that uh, the SFI representation of which with which the top left mix is a five. <coughs> okay. Then this five may contain states may interpolate for states which are in the four of SO4 or in the one of SO1. Of course, since the SO5 series is nominally realized, there's no reason for the four and the one to be uh, degenerate, okay? Mm -hmm. Then I may have the four to be light, okay? Then this psi as a quantum number of four, this is a singlet. The set of both of boson is a four of SO4, and then I can write this copy. Mm -hmm. Okay? If I have a singlet, I cannot, mm -hmm. okay? So this copy is not so I have one less copy. It seems like another motivated scenario one could consider is that uh, <coughs> that that the top partners are light because they're elementary. Yes. Then they might have to come in complete uh, G representation. That seems like a case that might be worth thinking about. I agree. Yes. In the case in which uh, so G is small, the splitting is then. And the splitting would then just be abused by the yeah. some couplings to the strong sectors. Yes. So that is the little limit. Um, yeah, that's, that's right. It's more like the little bit. So, okay. And from this you can extract bounds. So what does the current search is says, uh, say, is a So uh, there are already stringent bounds, for instance, CMS has this analysis for a p time decaying uh, to uh, 
leptons, which can be applied to a five-third uh, guy. And uh, of course, in a, in a given model, the one I presented before, there is a correlation between the mass of the five-third and, for instance, the mass of the two-third partner of the top. Okay, but the the bounds comes directly on the five-third. Then, in the model, I infer what is the bound of the mass of the theta. Look at this line. So. Uh, Depending on the parameter, uh, I'm already I'm already entering the region where the, the, the according to the formula before, where the Higgs start to be tuned. Okay, mm -hmm. six hundred. This is uh, from the bounds goes from uh, six hundred GB to one TV. If uh, sorry, this is the. The blue and the green are different models. So uh, I understand how to read them. Yeah, and so these are the direct the yeah. Sorry, the bars are telling me the direct search limit on the X, say five and a half. Yes, yes. But the number you wrote there is yeah. the number on the T and the B. Yeah, exactly. So in a, so let's say let's take the, the blue. And then and then I just ignore the bars on the T and the B or whatever. <coughs> it is. Uh, so in a given model, if you give the mass of the five third you are fixing also the mass of the T. Yeah. So in this sense, it's excluding that... Uh, so what is the 638 or whatever it is applied to? Is so that a 5 thirds now? Yeah, so the, the direct power on the 5 thirds, assuming uh, so there is this capital Y, okay, let me, this capital Y here, okay, which defines, for instance, the splitting uh, between uh, the 5 thirds and the top, okay, mm -hmm. and the B. Okay, so you see that if this Y gets smaller, also, the B will contribute mm -hmm. to the 5 third signal. Okay? In this case, and this Y, uh, here, for small Y, I have a stronger bound of the 5 third. Now, because of... Uh, uh, oh, I see. The colors are this Y size. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the, the, a lot of correlations going on. Yeah, but the, 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 the point is the following. Mm -hmm. Even in the most, in the most optimistic situation where, let's say, uh, y is large, I'm already excluding top partners which are lighter than uh, 650 GB. Okay? okay? Then it, it, the situation could be worse. Let's say you're excluding x5 thirds that are lighter than 638 and that yes. applies yes. T, capital T, uh, exclusion yes. Yes. below 767. And and that that creates a hierarchy. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> One thing that these searches that are currently ongoing are missing is single production. They are mostly focused on double production, uh, but a high mass of, 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 of these uh, of these fermions, single production is uh, is better by by kinematics, uh, by the direction behavior. And most of all, uh, this coupling is the coupling between a Goldstone boson, okay, a T top and a heavy film. And as I as I was telling you before, this is a large cap in the case of a, of a composite top partner. So you really want to exploit the signatures of uh, So D is an electroweak boson? Yes. Okay. You really want to exploit, for instance, the existence of this forward jet to tag these, uh, these events and have it stronger. You have also bounce on, you, you can also think about bosonic resonances. And uh, of course, as I said, it's not so compelling the presence as light states because of electric precision test. Still, you can look what happens. Uh, the production is through the Reliant, and uh, the coupling between two light fermions and a composite resonance is, goes like this. It goes in this way. Uh, so it is suppressed uh, at strong coupling. And, and exactly here you see that the uh, present bounds, these are a bit old, fortunately, are excluding the region where the coupling is small. So I'm not really proving the fact that. Uh, I'm excluding uh, strong interaction here. I'm really excluding only weak interactions. 
quarter of 20 minutes and do the discussion. Ah, okay. So uh, uh, you know. keep asking questions during okay. the talk, but, you know, don't yeah. worry so much. Uh, okay, so you see. But these are electroweak resonances. But if you may think about, so if I have a color, no, uh, if, if I have a color top area, then I need to have uh, heavy gluons. And uh, they, don't have, they don't give problem to uh, electronic uh, observables. And in particular, <coughs> they can enhance the production of, uh, of uh, top partners. This is because, uh, so <coughs> even if this coupling is particularly small, the one between two elementary uh, fermions and, uh, and electronic threats and the composite threats, the mixed coupling, light, heavy, is not small. It is only suppressed, it is a border zero, and it is only suppressed by the compositeness of this uh, particle. If this particle is the top, then uh, this can be deep. So the, the production of the single top partner, not electroweak production, the one I was talking before, the production of the single top partner through uh, a heavy gluon can be, can be relevant. And actually, it can give better bounds, according to these people. Uh, it can give better reach on the discovery of uh, both the top partner and the heavy gluon than the usual, uh, the usual search uh, where the top partner and uh, where the heavy gluon decays to two tops. Okay, this is because in this case, where you have uh, a heavy um, thing in the final state, you can cut on its invariant mass and so you do better bounds. So, uh, this is very interesting. So, uh, <coughs> and this is uh, already uh, LHC at uh, <coughs> 70 V was putting interesting bounds on, on both heavy gluons and uh, top particles. So, so it's not, maybe you said it, but I, somehow it's not clear to me why you, you, you really would expect these heavy gluons to decay to to capital T bar, little t, one composite, just because they mix, I guess? Is that so, right? yeah, so, so, that's the point. so if you decay to two tops, yeah. you have two mixing angles to grade. If, uh, yeah. So wouldn't you, but then, and what about just, if you don't pay any mixing angles, you're saying maybe capital T, capital T bar, it's so then kinematically, right, yeah. got it, okay. So then this would be 100%. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course, okay. if, you, if these are the old, then uh, you, you, the capping is good. Okay, uh, this has been discussed by before, so I will skip on this. What I wanted to, to say is that uh, uh, if you don't believe electronic precision test, uh, if you don't want to take them too seriously, you, you are still not, uh, you don't have the same problem yet in uh, single X measurements from LHC. If you look at the CMS plot, uh, you have plenty of space to deal with a psi border, uh, with a square over F squared over the 40%. Okay? Uh, so this is the line where uh, one of the models live, and all the others typically end up in the line like this. Okay? So uh, you can have deviations more than 40% from the standard model from this. Uh, when you say don't take precision electroweak too seriously, does that mean if you allow a positive contribution to T, or is yes, there something Yes, so if you, allow, if you allow a positive contribution to T, still uh, you, you, you have really to be in this one, one sigma region. You, you cannot allow 40% deviation from the... Uh, yeah. And so, and do these top partners in principle allow you to have additional contributions to T? Yes, yes. They, they do. Now, the, the point is, uh, an explicit calculation in a, in a complete model, to my knowledge, uh, it does not exist. So I mean in a... Uh, well, no, uh, no, it exists uh, in one, one of the things <coughs> about uh, one continuous paper calculation. But systematic, uh, a systematic uh, analysis of this does not exist. Uh, so I mean, to me, one per mil in uh, delta t is not uh, is not that big. So you 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 can have. Of course, you 
examples than the sign examples. Okay. Uh, then the last thing I would like to talk about is the following. So uh, <coughs> this, the one I talked about, are all indirect signals of mixed compositors because the, 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 they they don't touch the, the role of the uh, fundamental role of the standard model <coughs> in the standard model. That is to keep the, the theory weakly coupled at all energies. Okay? Uh, in, a, in a generic composite X model, I'm modifying all these single, double, triple X couplings, and also this the potential, but okay. And uh, modifying these couplings makes this amplitude, for instance, the scattering of four on the uh, W boson, uh, the scattering of two W boson into two Higgs, uh, it makes all of them uh, growing with the energy so that at a certain point I, I hit a strong coupling okay, in my perturbative description breaks down and then I, have, I need to have inflictions. So, the real test of, of compositeness <coughs> is to uh, measure these amplitudes. To measure these amplitudes, you, you, <coughs> you need to look at process of this kind. At the LHC, you need to look at W scattering, either into two Ws or into two Higgs, for instance. Now, there is an unfortunate, an unfortunate uh, thing that goes on with the W scattering, uh, which is there is a numerical accident that makes such that uh, you have you need to have two very high energy, higher than expected, in order to see. Uh, the, the S-way behavior of this amplitude. This is an accident. On the other hand, the double X production, and also, no, notice the following. So in, in WW fusion, uh, what you are proving is the coupling, uh, the, the single X coupling, uh, the, the one W for X. Uh, and this is basically the same one you are proving uh, at the LHC now. Why? Uh, WW to HH doesn't have both of these problems. So you are putting a new, a new parameter, which is the speed, which gives plenty of information on the nature of the H, for instance. And also you don't have this problem of, uh, of having to wait in very high energies, like one TV, central mass energy, to see something. Already the LL to HH amplitude is bigger than the standard model background at the smaller central mass energy. So are you comparing this to WW scattering? Yes. <coughs> the, 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 the partonic WW to WW, the one that displays the S-wave uh, behavior, uh, is uh, as a factor of one over 500 uh, suppression due to the combination of factors in the end. So is the claim that we're going to discover in these models double Higgs production before we discover an excess in WW? No, really no, this no. is a, no, because there are uh, problems with, with backgrounds, of course. Uh, so, so I thought it was the other way around. I thought yeah. it's still WW is better. Still, at the LHC, still WW is better than, than HH, yes because of background, because uh, there are, the analysis are the following. So, <coughs> uh, this analysis of the stereo tile uh, for WW scattering, and you see that we basically with 200 inverse femtobar at, uh, at uh, <coughs> 14 TV, you can measure the deviation of order 50%, while uh, in double X production, assuming a heavy X, which now they you know it's not, uh, to enhance the branch relation to, to Ws, you are still only touching the, the technical limit side equals to one. And the reason is that uh, <coughs> the, the, the signal is overall smaller. And now with the light X, you have no chance to see anything at this because the Higgs will decay most of the time in So, uh, the, the, the last thing I want to point out is that to really see this, you really... Just go back. Yes. Sir. I'm trying to understand. 
then there's a the circle there. So, I, yeah, so uh, if you look at the channel where uh, you have uh, HH, jet jet, mm -hmm. going to three leptons, right. okay, we cycle to one, so technical limit, you expect to see uh, 4.9 bands to 1.1. So that's what we have in this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. <coughs> so, and I won't believe so much that I have so good one band. Yeah. Right. To really answer this kind of question, what you need is energy and small backgrounds. So you need the linear collider. Suppose, suppose you, uh, um, suppose you, at the LHC, ends up with the 10, 20 percent deviation in its couplings. You haven't seen any particles, or maybe you've seen some of them, but you, it's not clear what's the role. Uh, can you conclude that you have weak or strong coupling? You, you cannot from the LHC at all. And again, you really want to probe this amplitude to see whether the Higgs is weakly or strongly coupled. Because if this amplitude is actually like measuring a coupling. Okay? So if you, if you have high enough energy and you see a deviation of this kind, a small deviation from zero, okay, you are actually saying that if I have 3 TV, center of mass energy, I put 3 TV here, then you see that the effective coupling I'm probing is large. So let's say I observe, uh, uh, let's say I observe uh, a, a, a hundred percent deviation. Okay, uh, then the square root of psi is equal to zero point one. Okay, then e let's say is three TV over three hundred GV. Then I'm probing. I'm saying that the coupling, the effective coupling describing this interaction at that energy is bigger than 3. So it's a, it's a, sim, it's a semi perturbative coupling. Uh, and this is a test that I'm seeing uh, strong interactions. Uh, what you also, what kind of question can you answer with this? Uh, I don't know whether this, this really the fundamental question, but still. Uh, measuring just single X coupling, you cannot say whether the Higgs uh, is a, belongs to that, for instance. Um, or it is a, uh, simply a singlet with coupling stool in such a way to, to look like a doublet. In a, in a, in a, uh, when the Higgs is a doublet, this relation holds up to corrections of order delta A squared. So, uh, Delta B is, is basically the difference between a, a double X coupling and a single X coupling. So if you measure both, okay, at, uh, <coughs> if you measure deviations, if you measure delta A, order 10%, um, order 20%, let's say, and then if you measure that this difference is bigger than say 1%, then you exclude the hypothesis that the, that the scalar particle we are observing now belongs to that. We can do other tests, like uh, check whether the Higgs is a ghost or boson. In that case, the relation holds, whether it is a dividend. In this case, the relation holds. Of course, measuring now deviations from the standard model is more than 10%. If at the end of LHC you measure deviation uh, from the standard model which is smaller than 10%, then uh, uh, you really don't expect something as a data to be there. Uh, you, you, you are indirectly testing that the standard model X you are, the X you are seeing is the standard model X. So, um, but still, a high energy linear collider can provide the answer to these questions. Uh, so, and uh, from work which is ongoing, and also, this reference uh, a 3 TV linear collider with one inverse out of our uh, integrated luminosity can, can be sensitive to deviations from the standard model cutting of order percent. 
can measure the, uh, the trilinear x coupling, but this is really what these two couplings are, in my opinion, really matter. Right? So, uh, to measure single and double x coupling at the level of uh, percent. And for instance, the measurement of that is not possible at flow energy like the ISC. Um, because I, ha I don't have the time to, to see the high energy behavior of that. Um, so I will continue here a few more questions. So this is from the ISC, uh, from the CDR. <coughs> They report this kind of measurement on single x coupling. Um, so it's a y, oh, it's delta a squared. Yeah, so it's. it's um, so what we click to for delta a squared, for example, if you're asking us to add this? It's a level of, of, of 1%, yes. It's, it's a so, so click doesn't do any better than the IMC? No, because, uh, because it's, uh, you don't gain much from energy. From that measurement, <coughs> what you what you gain from energy is a uh, is on this coupling, which we, and at the ILC the, the difference between WW scattering and uh, WW 6 is completely evident. So uh, it's much better to look at WW 6 and uh, this kind of energy because uh, the background is much much smaller. Mm -hmm. If you have a, 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 a good energy resolution, such a way to distinguish an X from a, from a, from a Z and a W, which you should have. So these plots here, for which collider? So these are at uh, 3TV. Yeah. And that's what I say again? These are 3TV. Oh, so they are the plates. Yeah. So, yeah. so what would you look for? I guess I just want to put the Yeah, yeah, yeah. So So you see here, <coughs> it's fix uh, the, the linear coupling with the standard model one. And then let's look at how uh, this distribution behaves at high energy, the distribution of HT. <coughs> let's assume that uh, the Higgs decays to U bar. And you can reconstruct the Higgs. <coughs> then you see uh, the difference you can see by eye uh, between uh, 0 and 0 0.1. What is the scale there? Uh, ah, this is, this is a normalized distribution. So it's just uh, to see the difference between the values. Uh, so the, the absolute value of the cross section is a quarter times of So all over this range, the cross section is a quarter times of So with one afterburner, uh, you have uh, over the 1,000 events. Mm -hmm. It is reasonable to reach it. Right. <coughs> Okay, well, thank you very much. So, are there questions? Other than what you've already asked. <laughs> so what, what do you get with one TDV ILC? Or is that a three foot competition? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, um, I think so for instance, uh, at ILC at 500 GV, you uh, are able to measure uh, a linear combination of the trilinear x coupling and, uh, and, the, and the double x coupling to the uh, importance. This is because you, you cannot disentangle the two because so at, uh, at 500 GV, the process which dominates uh, double X production is uh, so double, double, double X straddle, which is the straddle of two X's from an zero. Okay? And this process doesn't group the energy. So uh, now, if you go to one TV, I believe that you will be able to have contributions from this process, which grows with the energy. And so probably you will be able to disentangle delta B from delta B. I'm not sure about the numbers, but for sure at INC you are not able to, to tell uh, the effect of, uh, of the potential coupling from the one of the uh, X nonlinearities. Uh, 
one TB is, is probably enough to, to, to disentangle the uh, Because for sure, 3 TB is not uh, foreseen. Has the, the, the single top partner production been studied? So, um, mechanism that. so there are no studies um, here in this uh, paper. Here they are just uh, uh, rephrasing the searches of these, um, of these, uh, these searches right. in their model. Now, uh, I don't know what is the reach you can get if you also try <coughs> to, 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 to tag these uh, forward jets. So this should probably be not experimental. Uh, so this is the first work which, one of the first work which does this in uh, systematic way for the mm -hmm. okay, the Thirds, mm -hmm. and since it's lower mass, mm -hmm. and these models definitely be more sensitive. Yes. So I guess you know, experimentally we're going to check. <laughs> yeah, so there, <laughs> but capital T channels too. But uh, so why did you, I, I didn't ask at the time, why is that called T tilde there on the right? Uh, wait. Ah, here. Ah, yeah, because I, then I, I, yeah, no, it's, ah, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah. No, sorry, 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 I know why. So because the, the first search is more effective to constrain the model where the top partners are 4 of SO4, mm -hmm. while the second search is more effective to constrain the model where the top partner is uh, oh, 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 the single. So this is the, the single. Uh, yeah. specific example, you know that it will up, will up. So, I mean, if you take a 5D model, the, since you have a color which propagates into the bulk, you need to have gauge bosons into the bulk. You, you need to have something which propagates. So, uh, now, first thing, I, I, don't, I don't know whether it should be light. Uh, but in general, I expect uh, that there will be spin one resonance with uh, Simply quantum number. If the, the if color is a is a is a is a global symmetry of the strong sector which is gauged by the by the unit. I think it's quite well, why would you expect that to be a narrow resonance or anything like that? Why would that ah, why narrow? That? Well so for instance if it has I'm sure I understand from EDS CFD is motivated, right, from the RSA. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering whether you can see that from the CFD side, whether you can see that there is story there. So, uh, if you, if you, well, it can be narrow if we, for instance, if you can only get the part of the head. If, uh, or if the coupling is not terribly large. So, for instance, if you take, uh, you have to compare it uh, uh, but usually if you take a scalar resonance and a vector resonance and you couple them to the boson bosons, usually the scalar resonance is much wider than the, 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 the scalar resonance is much wider than the if you had a if you had a, uh, a strong sector, the yeah. lightest colored thing would be stable if it weren't for the perturbative interactions, no? SU3 color with the global symmetry. Yep. The lightest SU3 color charged resonance would be absolutely stable if you didn't have any other interaction besides the front sector. So it can only decay by perturbative interaction. So if you kinematically forbid the case to the partners, 
Yeah, because the other, the other, yeah, because you have the top fibers. They're actually colored as well. Yeah. But again, if, if it's not too strongly coupled to them, it's Again, I see. You know, an amusing thing is that if you look at your SU3 gauge theory, it has like five or six stable particles. Because you have two discrete symmetries, C and P, and then you have plus, plus, minus, minus, and that. But some things are not kinematically allowed. You end up with, just on the lattice, you have like five or six stable blue balls. Guys decay to Higgs at all? I mean, yeah, you, you wrote down some yeah, you, conventional you kinds of channels, but would they be confused by decays to Higgs? Uh, uh, I mean, are those branching ratios ever big? Or, yeah, I mean, like maybe. capital T to Higgs little t or something like that. I'm just making something up here. So the, 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 these are not uh, sequential for okay? So uh, the, the, the branching ratio to, you, you can use the equivalence theorem to know what is the branching ratio. So they will decay almost democratically to like T and uh, T dub. The, the, the five third only decays to T dub. That's, that's clear. But if you take the two third partner, you, it will decay like 25% of the time, uh, sorry, 50% uh, of the time to D dub, 25% uh, to T dub, and 25% to T dub. Mm -hmm. so, So actually, they are using this factor here. Yeah. The many electrons come from the Z's and the W's. Questions? The first section is larger. It's not like stops. So the first section is bigger. So it should be easier. But uh, I mean, just because they're not spin zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah.
you have to sort of go inside the little shopping mall uh, on the right hand side. So it's sort of draw the picture here. <coughs> Uh, here's physics down here. You walk north through the campus, maybe a few little things here. Then you get this Russell Boulevard. There's a uh, big road here, big intersection there. Then there's the shopping center, kind of uh, like this. And, uh, and there's a little tail here. The shop doesn't actually run into the road, of course. And the restaurant is sort of right in this uh, corner here. Okay. So with uh, nothing else, I hope to see all of you there. And uh, like I said, so feel free to talk to whoever you want to talk to, and uh, if you want to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, uh, there's some students in the audience here. They should, uh, you know, feel free to sort of start to mingle with the more senior people around if they you know, want to learn something and so forth. Yeah, a 